aware of the vulnerability at these times of the year. I believe that we are praying before you tonight, O oh God. We ask that you give us strength, wisdom, and understanding and guidance in this service. We pray that everything will be done to your honor, to your praise, and to your glory. And the prayer shall ascend it tonight. We come before your throne and we pray ourselves for this season. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. before the end because of his other responsibilities. Welcome to ministers of the Nevis Island administration and all the officials. Welcome to the representatives of the Disaster Management Coordination Agency, Nevis. Welcome to all the pastors of the Christian Council members and Evangelical Association and warm welcome to all of you brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, ask and you will be given, knock and it will be opened to you. And we are here today to do that because we believe that Jesus is among us and with us and he is willing to help us. We are grateful to God for the past years which uh, passed without damage to our island and federation. And we are putting our trust and hope in God, asking him again to protect us and be with us. Let us pray together and offer our time here and prayers, believing and hoping that God will hear our prayers and answer them, and that he will again this season protect us and help us. My family in Christ, let us kindly stand together as we continue our service. Page two of our order of service. We are disciples of Christ and called by his name. Let us draw near to him who is the living way. For our weaknesses and failures, grant us true repentance, so that we may turn from self to live for you, in you, and with you. Amen. 
As we meet in your house, in fellowship with each other, grant that through this act of worship, we may find grace and strength to put our trust in your loving mercy, kindness, and protection. And now we have one of the pastors from the Evangelical Association to lead us as the officiating minister in the prayer for God's protective presence. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender and protector, storms rage around about and about us and our island home and often cause us to be afraid. Rescue us and our island home from all despair and destruction. Deliver your sons and daughters and our island home from fear and preserve us all from lack of faith in your ever-faithful protection, providential love, and guidance through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Good evening, church. Our first lesson comes from Psalms 107, verses 19 to 30. Here begins. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to the humankind. And let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices, and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and started like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs>
Bible statement from Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. One day he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A gale swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed, and said to one another, Who then is this? that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey. The word of the Lord. Greetings, one and all, brothers and sisters, and all those who have come out to be a part of this all-important service this evening, where we are going to be imploring God's protection sorry, on our nation. I want to um, accept the protocol which has been established and acknowledge the government officials who are present with us this evening. And I would like to give the highest honor to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Somebody praise the Lord tonight. Amen. We have come to have church. We are in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Pastor is trying to joke me, whether I'm going to be long or short, just fast your seat now and get ready for the ride. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will be referencing for my message tonight the same scriptures which were already read. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray tonight in the name of Jesus that the word spoken would be an encouragement and upliftment. For those who will hear now and afterwards. And so we pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, would be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Hallelujah. I recall that there was one particular, particular year when the slogan for disaster preparedness was... Brother Jack, do you remember? Even if you're scared, be prepared. The thing that arrested my attention most was that the promotions used children in the schools to demonstrate the slogan. And it was very impressive and, in my mind, very, very effective. Why do I say that? What we're doing tonight in this service is one aspect of preparation. We are preparing by prayer. Amen? Amen? And that is just as important as all of the other exercises and activities which will be carried out before, during, and after the season ends. And we're trusting and we're hoping that this year, as previous years, will be another year when we will come to the end of this season, spared by the Almighty God. Amen. 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 And if you give me some amens, I'll finish quicker. <laughs> so we go through this exercise annually at the beginning of June. But I'm saying to us tonight, we must not approach it casually. We must not take it for granted. In my mind, if all of the churches members were gathered here tonight, people would be on the outside. And we are calling upon, upon the churches, we are calling upon the people of God. This exercise is the part that the church play, and we leave the other exercises to disaster management and government. Do I have a witness tonight? Amen. 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 So it is an extremely important aspect of the preparation process. We collectively come and we turn our attention and we give our focus to the only one who has any control of the storm. 
That's why the song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Because he alone knows where and when the storms will begin and end. He knows the path that the storms will take. He knows the speed and, and the intensity with which they will travel and so on and so forth. So, rightfully, we are seeking to put God in the rightful place, that is, first. Asking him to go before us, to lead, to guide, to direct, and to protect us individually and collectively as a nation as we approach this season of the year. And once we put God in front, any storm that comes has to pass through him. Do I have a witness? Although the main focus tonight is on natural disasters, we realize that in a general sense, storms represent troubles and trials and struggles and challenges and negative circumstances which comes to us from time to time. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, we have seen where there were storms of different kinds, natural disasters, and we cannot forget that there are storms of life. Amen? Amen? There is Noah and the flood, and that was a natural disaster. But then we go over and we see that there is Job, with his time of tribulation and affliction. Also, not just in the Bible, in history, we have seen or heard of natural disasters or other forms of life storms affecting different parts of the world. It was a natural disaster that hit our first town, Jamestown, and that was on a race. Most recently, we have heard about shooting of children and teachers in Texas, that is the United States. But that is a storm of life which has brought distress to families, to communities, and to an entire nation. And then we hear from time to time, it seems as though there is no season for the storms anymore. News of earthquake here, tsunami there, and things like that. What am I saying? Storms are a reality of life. Storms can affect anyone, anywhere, at any time. Therefore, the old adage is very apt, where it says, when your neighbor's house is on fire, help me out. Okay. What does that mean? Simply means be armed and be prepared. Today, it hits America. Another day, it's going to hit Cuba. Another day, Haiti. And we cannot, in this generation, sit on our lofty place and think, oh, how blessed and highly favored we are because the storms keep passing us by year after year. Who knows when it's going to be our turn. In fact, just to wait a little, we are so close in the Caribbean that if the wind blows in Anguilla, it can blow our clothes off of a clothesline. Here we need it. If storm hits Miami on a serious note, the containers won't be able to come to bring the important goods for the supermarket. Do you realize it's already happening? God help us. So storms are likely to affect us individually, collectively, mentally, emotionally, physically, economically, and spiritually. It's the 1st of June today, and it's the day designated as the time when we are entering into the hurricane season. But some of us are old enough to know that natural storms and disasters have been known to arise outside of the designated period and has done great devastation when we were unaware or unprepared. But in a broader context, generally speaking, 
I believe that seated here tonight, and for those who will be receiving the message later, there are persons who are presently experiencing storms of life. And if you're not experiencing now, there just be, might be a wind blowing your way. And you must be prepared. And the best means of preparation is through prayer. Because our best natural human preparation is never adequate for protection. And that is why we need the protection of the Almighty. Not just in the hurricane season, but at all times. The psalmist declares, if it had not been for the Lord's protection, many of us would not be here today to tell the tale of all the storms that we would have gone through in our lives. And that is why it's important that as a nation, we come together to see God's protection. What I'm glad for, I give God thanks for, is that the female says he'll have to go, but he showed up. Because he says, I'm leading the way in this service. Amen? Amen. So I want to say to us this evening that the God from whom we seek protection can protect us from storms by preventing the storm. And that is what we would like to happen year after year. A storm-free nation. We are hopeful. Amen. But there's a hymn we sing and it says, God has not promised skies always blue. Flows through pathways all our lives through. God has not promised sun without rain. Joy without soul or peace without pain. God has not promised we shall not know toil and temptation, trouble and war. He has not told us we shall not be a many a burden or many a care. These are words from one of our hymns. Even with God in our corner, even with God on our side, we can expect to experience storm at some point in time. But God can also protect us during a storm by taking us safely through in the event that one comes our way. So listen to the other part of that hymn. It says, but God has promised strength for the day, rest for the labor, light for the way, grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love. We can trust God in the storm. I can assure us tonight that God will also be there for us after the storm to bring restoration, to bring healing, and to bring refreshing to us individually and as a nation. That is the God we have come to see. That is the God we serve. That is the God in whom we can trust. Do I have a witness tonight? Amen. And so I just want to bring to focus tonight, one, we can rely on God's providence. Secondly, we can be assured of God's presence. Thirdly, we can have confidence in God's promises. And fourthly, we can trust in God's power. Can we give God some praise tonight? Providence speaks of the fact that God knows about things before they even happen. Before knowledge and foresight in all situations. Providence says what God does not prevent, he permits for a purpose. Providence says for any and every natural disaster or storm of life which may occur or arise, God knows ahead of time. Amen. Amen. Providence says, whether we are prepared or not, nothing takes our God by surprise. Amen. Amen. The second lesson came from Luke chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. And it tells us about an encounter of the disciples when a storm arose unexpectedly 
Because Jesus had instructed them, let us go to the other side. Jesus, God's son in the flesh, he must have known that a storm was on the horizon. But he also knew by providence how he was going to handle it. Amen. However, the storm was unexpected to the disciples. They seemed to be unprepared, so it seems. But according to the text, Jesus was on the road. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says he fell asleep, but he was present. He was sleeping in the natural as the Son of Man. But we know that our God does not sleep. Our God does not slumber. Praise God. In the midst of any kind of storm, God is up all night. He's not observing like the weather forecasters. He's up all night taking care of our business. Yeah. Hallelujah. That is why for those who have faith and confidence in God, we can rest knowing that God is in control. Yeah. Amen. He knows the path, he knows the speed, he knows when it will slow down, he knows when it will speed up, he knows where the eye is. One way they usually have a program during the hurricane season, eye on the storm. Whenever there's a storm pending, they have that program running. And we hear about the eye of the storm. And depending on how the eye is located or how it's moving, we know whether we are going to get a direct hit or if it's going to pass outside. You can correct me. <laughs> we also hear, thank God, about the eye of God. And God's eye is not just the eye on the storm, but it is the He is the eye in the storm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's always in the know and He's always in control. Therefore, when we speak of eyes, when a storm arises, we can say, like King Jehoshaphat said, Lord, we don't know what we are going to do, but our eyes are on you. We can rely on God's providence, because in his providence, he's always prepared for any circumstance. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Then we can be assured of God's presence. Jesus was on the boat. So we are assured of God's presence, not only during storms, but always. The ever-present God. And God gives us assurance in his word. When he says in Isaiah 43, verse 2 and verse 3, When thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God. That's a powerful statement. Amen. Hallelujah. The hymn writer says, many times, when these things happen, Satan whispers, there's no need to try, or there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope, by and by. But the writer sounds back and he says, but I know the Lord with me. And tomorrow I'll rise where the storm never darkens the sky. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And over and over in the word of God, we see how in man's darkest and most difficult times, God gives the assurance of his presence. Praise God. And when we think of God's presence, we think of his availability to protect us. We think of his accessibility. We can access God any time, come boldly before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. So Jesus was with his disciples on the boat, readily available and easily accessible when that storm arose. Amen. That is why the writer says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace, where you can find mercy and grace to help in the time of need, in the time of trouble, in the time of storm. And when we go before the throne of grace, we are acknowledging God's presence and we are acknowledging our need for God's protection. 
And I see the hymn printed in the program here. We are seeing, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to take some time tonight to remind us gently. God is present when crisis comes to your home and your family. Whether physical, financial, or otherwise. Mm -hmm. God is present when others seem to forsake and forget you in your time of trouble. God is present when our nation is facing crisis politically, like now. And God is present as a shelter in the time of storm. Word of God that we know, God is our refuge and strength are very present in time of trouble. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. One songwriter says, we can be confident of God's presence and we can be encouraged. Mighty times about me sweep. Perils lurk within the deep. Angry clouds will shade the sky and the tempest rises high. Still I stand the tempest shock for my anchor whips the rock. That rock is Jesus. Jesus. Storms of life are a reality. They come to all walks of life, rich and poor, literate and illiterate, those of high degree and those of low degree. It has no respect for political affiliation or religious denomination. I wish I had time to get down to that part, but I move on. You get the point. We can all expect storms of life, but we can also know that God has promised that he will be with you and he will take you through. Praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, if it had not been for the Lord, just think about that in your own life. Not the nation as yet, your own life. If it had not been for the Lord, we will. Then we have kind of confidence in the promises of God for his protection. It says in Isaiah 41 verse 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will uphold thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That is God's promise to be there for us in our difficult times. And in Psalm 91, it is a psalm of protection where God gives us some promises there in his word. He says, surely he shall deliver thee from the sneer of the poet fowler and the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. He shall be thy shield and thou buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the hour that flieth by thee, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor destruction at waste that wasted at noon. And it goes on and it goes on. We thank God for his precious promises, which we can trust. Amen. 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 God has promised protection as a shelter in the time of storm. So we say, let the storms rage high. Let the dark clouds rise. They don't worry me, for I'm sheltered, safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and naught on earth shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. And then we can trust God's power in his protection. Jesus demonstrated his power in that passage we read from Luke, where it says that he arose, he got up. They thought he was sleeping, but he got up and he rebuked the wind and the raging sea. And they ceased and there was a calm. That is a demonstration of the power of God. And there's so many words where it says, God, God tells this, he, stop right there, don't worry further. God tells this, he got a call. You go down there and watch it and you see. Stand up and watch it, and you will see that it's the work of God. You tell this, he go back, he come after you. But when God says, stay there and come no further, that is a demonstration of his power. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. 
I'm concluding. And I want to turn our attention to Genesis chapter 6. In my opinion, it is the first recorded natural disaster in the Bible. Just a few notes I get from there. One, there was a warning given by God to his servant Noah. Second, there was preparation because Noah was advised to build an ark of safety for the protection, not of himself, of everybody. Everybody should have been involved, but the majority refused. They didn't heed the warning. They were too busy living their lives and thinking that that is not possible. You know, as a child, and many of you could maybe identify, we remember, we heard about hurricane, but we could not picture what it was like. And children would say, let the hurricane come, I want to see, I want to see. But from the time that we got a bad one a couple of years ago, don't think anybody wants to see again. Help us, Lord. The end result from that disaster in Genesis was that no other family with a few animals were saved. Why? No heeded the warning. No made adequate preparation as he was instructed. No followed God's instruction when the time came and he entered the ark, which was the place of safety, which God prepared. And the Lord has given me this word to give a word of counsel to all of us. And I trust it will go out on the airways. Because there are those amongst us who hesitate and refuse to move when we're given the warning to get to higher ground and get to safer place. Because, you know what, we want to stay to protect our property and possessions. But who can protect it like God? If the storm really hit your house, if the storm take away, if the storm really take your possessions, who is going to take care of the property? You're gone. You're gone. And so I want to sound that warning again. When the time comes and we say move to higher ground or move to safety in the shelter or whatever it is, leave your property and possessions in the hands of Almighty God. If you lose it and you have your life, you have hope in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. And then, my brothers and sisters, we know about Job and all these storms of life that came upon him. But even when Job experienced these things, he worshipped God. He said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And if the Lord take away, he can give back as he did for Job. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So apart from the spiritual significance of the know and the are, where we tell people that, you know, it's a spiritual thing, come to Jesus Christ, come into the ark of safety, and be prepared for coming judgment. This is important, and I'm not trivializing it, but we bring it into the natural. In times of pending disaster, remember God is in control, not man. Remember one year when they were giving out the, the trap of the hurricane and the hurricane just stood up over St. Martin and it would not move. And, and up to when the hurricane did move, they were still thinking the hurricane is there. God is in control. That is what we are saying. So when we get the warning, pay attention. Be prepared. Be obedient and trust God. Because God can, one, prevent the storm. God can preserve us during a storm. And God can restore and replenish after the storm. Amen? Amen. Either way, we must trust our nation, trust our people, trust our resources to God who is able, to God who is available, to God who is accessible, to God who is reliable, and to God with whom all things are possible. Amen. Let us not take God for granted as in Noah's day. 
whether natural disasters, our own personal disasters in life, let us trust God. And so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I commend us all, our homes, our families, our nation, our person, our properties, our possessions, to the Almighty God, whom the Bible tells us is our refuge and strength and the very present help in time of trouble. May God bless I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 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 It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's the start of hurricane season. However, I just want to remind everyone that um, from the disaster manual, we monitor 13 hazards. So this is just one of many. But uh, it's a tradition that we honorly uh, commemorate or we celebrate or we pray for the divine protection from June. And the hurricane season lasts until November, right? Uh, this year, it's the sec seventh consecutive year that they have predicted uh, above average hurricane season. But uh, I won't be reading the prediction this evening. The young superstar in the office is going to be to bring in that message this evening. So, uh, and I'll turn over to uh, Mr. Benito. Good evening, church. Good evening. I'll be reading the Atlantic hurricane season prediction for the year 2022. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, issued its annual hurricane seasonal outlook for the North Atlantic Ocean, Caribbean Sea, and Gulf of Mexico on Tuesday, 24th of May, 2022. This outlook provides a general guide to the expected overall activity during the upcoming hurricane season. NOAA's outlook for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, which extends from June the 1st to November 30th, predicts that an above normal season is most likely, with a possibility the season could be extremely hyperactive. This year's outlook makes it the seventh consecutive above average hurricane season. The outlook calls for a 65% chance of an above normal season, followed by a 25% chance of a near normal season, and only a 10% chance of a below normal season. The 2022 outlook calls for a 70% probability for each of the following radius of activity. 14 to 21 named storms, winds of 39 miles per hour or higher, six to 10 hurricanes, winds of 74 miles per hour or higher, three to six major hurricanes, category three, four, or five, with winds of 111 miles per hour or higher. Accumulated cyclone energy, ACE, range of 115% to 200% of the median 75.4% and 130%. This ACE accounts for the combined intensity and duration of all named storms and hurricanes during the year. The increased activity anticipated this hurricane season is attributed to several climate factors. These include the ongoing La Nina that is likely to persist throughout the hurricane season, warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean Sea, weaker tropical Atlantic trade winds, and an enhanced West African monsoon. It is worthy to note that an enhanced West African monsoon supports stronger African westerly waves, which see many of the strongest and longest lived hurricanes during most seasons. Throughout this hurricane season, the Sinkins and Nevis Meteorological Services and the Nevis Disaster Management Department will provide early and accurate forecasts 
and warnings to the public for informed decision making. Early preparation and understanding your risk are primary tools to be prepared. So establish your family disaster and communication plans, stock up on dry and canned foods, secure your important documents, clean your drains, and build a first aid kit. Regardless of the overall activity for the season, it only takes one storm hitting an area to cause a disaster. Therefore, residents, businesses, and government agencies of coastal and near coastal regions are urged to prepare every hurricane season, irrespective of the seasonal outlook. For more information, you can visit our website at www.ndmd.kn or you could call us 469-1423. We continue to pray for God's mercy and favor over our lives during this hurricane season. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, we know the disaster management people are on the job and let us give them our support as we pray. Let us also remember what our sister reminded us that in that first natural disaster recorded in Genesis 6, no prepared, and we have to be prepared, do what we have to do, cooperate with our disaster management officers and officials, and do what we have to do to mitigate the disaster while we trust God to guide and drive us to the storm and to protect us even in the midst of the storm. Heavenly Father, we thank you graciously for all those who work in our disaster management and coordinating agency here on Nevis. As we enter into the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, we bring them and their support staff, volunteers and families before you. Bless, guide and protect them from all harm and danger. Strengthen their collaboration, cooperation and networking that their work together may enhance and enlarge our capacity to engage in disaster mitigation, which would contribute to the safety and security of all our communities during the 2022 hurricane season. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, be with our frontline workers who are the first responders in the wake of disaster. Help them whenever and wherever they have to come together to work, to rebuild lives, homes, and our communities after natural disasters. Give them the strength to work through physical and structural structures, the emotional hardships and social isolation, that in all circumstances and situations, they would be empowered to support one another that rebuilding of lives, livelihood, and communities, so that through them, Lord, we may experience renewal and restoration. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we are grateful for, for all those in our local communities who have volunteered to be in charge of disaster management and mitigation at the level of our local communities. Surround them, O oh God, of all power and might with your protective presence. Give them the wisdom they need to know how to best move forward and how to build cooperation and support within and among communities. Help them know what to do to motivate communities to good disaster mitigation and management practices that in the event of our being adversely affected by natural disasters, all would be encouraged to give generously to the efforts to rebuild and to reorganize. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, 
if it's not before you, our citizens, residents, our island. And ask your protection on us all. As we face 2022 hurricane season, strengthen each one of us to take necessary precautions. Be with us as our protector. Save us from our fears and banish from among us complacency and reckless behavior. Help us as we continue to put trust in you and know that you are in control. Help us to act responsibly, to play our part, to lessen the effects of disasters upon our lives, surroundings, and communities. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God and our Heavenly Father, who sends sunshine and rain, cold and heat, strong winds and refreshing breezes in due season. As we enter the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, we beseech you to protect us from the ravages of serious storms. But if your chastening hand should so inflict us, Grant that in your mercy we may be given strength to endure, lest our faith and reliance on you fail. Everlasting God, we pray for all disaster response and support agencies that work in our island, in our federation. Bless all financial institutions and insurance companies that they create avenues for all to have access to the financial, medical, mental, and emotional assistance and help, which they may need to deal with the aftermath of disaster. Lord God, guide and direct the operations of all such agencies that they may make a way for the required resources to be accessible. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. Loving and gracious God, in times of disaster, your love and mercy compels us to the side of our regional brothers and sisters. We thank you for our regional disaster management agencies. Bless guide and inspire the operations that they may mobilize us that in the face of destruction from disasters our charity and compassion will be mobilized to stand with those who have been adversely affected through the work of these agencies may we be organized to be in solidarity with all who suffer and to share and help all who need our assistance. Strengthen the advocacy of our regional disaster management agencies. Fortify them through our prayers that in the time of disaster, their work may help in the marshalling of resources to feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, to care for the sick, and to reach the trapped and the stranded. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Our prayer. Lord, our God, we know that you hear the fervent prayers of your people. And we pray that what we have asked in faith and faithfulness, and with fervency at this time, that you grant us effectually for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
O God of grace and glory, God of love and goodness, the God of the providence, the God of promise, the God of power, the God of presence, we thank you for all your blessings upon our lives, our homes, and our families, and upon our federation, Lord, especially for your special presence with us throughout the past hurricane seasons. We are grateful to you, and it is out of our grateful hearts that we have given you this monetary offering, Lord. We ask that we let you receive our lives, receive our homes, receive all who we are, and all who we have, and bless them with your guidance, your love and protection, and bless us in continued service to you, and in love and support and encouragement of each other, helping each other to build and strengthen our faith, that you are the God of providence. You're always in the midst of things. You're always in control. And we can trust you because we are faithful to your promises. So bless and strengthen us and let us continue to rejoice and have hope and continued commitment to you who we are bold to pray to as our Lord himself taught us as we pray.
being the Lord of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for not enough to be here tonight. We put the prayer that we have sent up before you tonight. To be attentive, to let your ear. And your heart to do the words of God. And we so rely upon you. We so put our confidence and our trust in you, our protector and our defender in times of difficulty. I pray we leave this place tonight and we to give you thanks and to praise you and to believe that what you have asked, it shall be done. In the end, we shall give you praise, honor, and glory for so doing.